Event Endpoint Management lets you treat your Kafka topics as asynchronous APIs that can be published and managed, available for your developers to discover in this async API catalog. Each of the topics is documented with all of the information rendered in the catalog site, but if you want to use the async API document with other tools, you can export it to a file. And if you're working with tools that don't support v3 yet, the catalog can convert the document into one of the older versions of the format for you. Now that I've discovered a Kafka topic that I want to use, I want to get started quickly with my new project. So I'm going to use the Java template code generator to bootstrap a new Java project that will consume events from this topic. I just need to tell it the location of the async API document that I downloaded, the location of where I want it to put the generated code, and then I just need a username and password. That's the only thing I need that isn't contained in the async API document. So I go back to the event endpoint management catalog to create myself a new username and password just for this project. With this, the generator will have everything that it needs to create a complete working project, ready to build, ready to run, without me having to do any of the boilerplate work to build a new Kafka project. So let's have a look at what it's created for me. It's a complete Java project um, with all the, the scaffolding needed to connect to the cluster, create a Kafka consumer, start consuming the events. It includes a POM XML file, so the project is ready to build uh, straight away. But before I run it, I'm going to make a, a small change. The skeleton code uh, here will receive the events from the Kafka topic and deserialize them so they're ready for your application to use. At that point, this is where you can start adding in your logic. You can start adding in whatever it is that you want your application to do with these events. Now I'm just going to print out a couple of the attributes from the events to show that it's working. So I use the catalog to tell me what kinds of properties I can expect to find in these events. And I'm just going to pick a, a couple of the strings and, and print them out. But the point is, I've been able to jump straight into adding the logic for what I want my application to do without having to do all the rest of the boilerplate needed to connect to the Kafka cluster and start consuming from the topic. So with my changes made, I can rerun the Maven build and try running my app. And here it goes, printing out the events that it's getting from the Kafka topic. I went from zero to having a working app in just seconds because all of the information that was needed was contained in the async API document and the generator knew how to use that to create a working Java application. Maybe I don't want to develop my application using real events on that real topic. The last tool I want to demo, Microx, can help with that by creating a mock topic that I can use to develop against. And that async API doc that describes the real topic can help with that. If I upload the async API document into Microx, it can create me a, a, a topic for development and test purposes, and it will emit a stream of events to that topic that I can use to develop against. By default, it will take the example message payload from the async API document and produce that to the topic every three seconds. To show you it in action, I'll quickly run a Kafka console consumer against the topic. And you can see that example payload from the async API document being emitted every few seconds. That's probably not ideal. For development purposes, you probably don't want to see the same event over and over. So if I go back to my async API document, I can edit that example payload and replace the hard-coded values with template functions that describe the kind of data I want to see in each of those properties. I won't fill all of them out now, but if I do things like fill out the UUID or a list of uh, valid values, that gives you an example of the kinds of things that you can do. I just need to re-import the document every time I make any changes to it. So I re-upload that, and then it will start modifying the events that the, the mock data generator is producing to the topic. So with that change, you can see here the UUIDs and the region are different in every event. I can add one more template function to show you the kind of thing that this can do. If I go to that customer name and replace it with a random full name template function, I'll get a different customer name in every event on the topic. Just need to import that modified async API document again, and then in a second or two, I'll start seeing new events on this topic. 
So that shows you uh, the kind of things that this can enable. It supports development for new projects by letting you quickly generate streams of events for development or test purposes.